Hi everyone, I'm Nick Olivo, and today we're looking at the auto button script for Roll20. This script speeds up combat by giving the DM a set of buttons that they can use to quickly apply the damage or healing from an attack or spell to a specific target with just the click of a button. Note that because we're using the API, a pro account is required in order to do this. Before we dive in, I'd just like to thank Roll20 for sponsoring this video. I'm always looking for ways to speed up combat in my game, and I've done videos on other scripts like Group Initiative and Group Check, which are great for handling mobs of monsters, but what about when you just have a single target that your cleric is dealing with? They're getting ready to cast Guiding Bolt against a zombie, and you want to quickly apply the damage for that Guiding Bolt. Well, at level one, that's a pretty easy thing to do. You roll the damage and you just deduct that number of hit points from the zombie. But as your cleric grows in power and they can start upcasting and suddenly their damage looks like this, well now we actually have to stop and think and do math. And granted, this is still just simple addition, but if you've already been at your day job for 9 or 10 hours that day, Simple math like this suddenly isn't so simple anymore. So what the auto button script does is gives you a toolbar with the damage automatically calculated so that you can just click on your target and deduct that amount of HP without needing to do the math. Let's take a look at how it works. So the first thing we need to do is install our script. And the auto button script has a prerequisite. In order for it to work, you also have to install the token mod script. Now, token mod is available from the Roll20 script library. Just come in here, search for it, and grab token mod. Token mod was built by the Aaron, the arcane scriptomancer himself. Thank you, Aaron, for everything you do in the community. So we're just going to add that into our game. And then once we have token mod loaded, then what we want to do is head on out to this forum post where the script's author, Oosh, has put the script and also a bunch of really awesome documentation. So, Oosh, thank you so much for this script. It is a game changer. I'm going to put a link to this forum post down in the video description. The code itself is on this GitHub page, which is right here. And so what you want to do when you get to the GitHub page is go to this auto buttons JS link right here. Click this then click raw and then just control a on your keyboard or command a if you're on a Mac to copy everything control a control C and then back to our script section here we're gonna say new script we're gonna paste this in and we're gonna call this auto button save that and now we've got everything loaded and we're ready to go so now let's see the script in action so here we have my cleric Zerakiel who is fighting off these zombies and this greater shadow and so Zerakiel wants to take a shot at one of the zombies with a guiding bolt because he knows that if he can drop the zombie with radiant damage, then it's not going to get its undead fortitude ability and it won't be able to come back with one hit point. So we're going to cast guiding bolt and let's say we're going to cast it at level two because we know that level one might not be enough to, to drop the zombie. So we'll click submit here. So in addition to the normal attack roll and damage, the DM also gets this toolbar whispered to them with a bunch of commands that allow them to deduct or add hit points to a particular target. And I just want to stress that this toolbar only shows up for the DM. Your players will not see this in their chat. All right, now we can see 16, we made our attack roll. We have a total of 17 radiant damage here with another four coming from the higher level cast. So doing the math, that's 21 damage. So what I can do is I could come over here and I could type minus 21 right here, or I could just click on the zombie and click this heart button here that says full minus 21. And now auto button has done the math for me and I've been able to just click on the target and reduce its HP. So effectively, what we've just done is taken something that would have been a click on the token, typing minus 22, enter, and then continuing on, down to click on the token, click on a button. So we've just saved ourselves a few keystrokes. But where this really shines is when you get into much higher values for damage, like when you're dealing with upcasts and crits. So let's take a look at how that works. So in order to force a crit, what I'm going to do is open up Zerakiel's character sheet here. I'm going to find the guiding bolt entry, and I'm just going to change his crit range from 20 down to 2. And that means anything 2 or higher will trigger a crit. Okay, so now 
We'll cast Guiding Bolt again, and I'm going to cast it up at level 5, because we want to get this greater shadow here. I'm going to submit that. Okay, so, oh, wow, actually, we rolled crits anyway. So now what I need to do is, okay, 17 plus 10 is 27 plus 30, so 57 damage total. I can just click on this guy. This button here contains the crit value. This gives you just the regular damage. So if we had rolled and we hadn't scored a crit, like let's say we had had a regular roll and then a crit, we would know it would just be these two numbers here. So this full is the regular damage. Crit is the regular damage plus the crit damage. So that's our 57. I can just click that. And now that's been deducted from the greater shadows hit points. Now this also works with healing too. So let's say that Zerakiel has taken some damage and he's going to cast Healing Word on himself. Well, I can cast Healing Word and let's say we're going to cast that at level 2. We'll submit that. Okay, so we have a grand total of 9 healing that's been performed here. I can click on him and then click this plus button and that will restore those hit points back to him. So depending on the spell that's being cast, you can reduce or increase the amount of hit points on a given target. Now you may have noticed there is one button left on the toolbar that we haven't talked about, and that's this one right here, this half button. And this is used for when the target is resistant to the type of damage that has been dealt to them. So here you can see half is negative 10 HP, so that's 21 divided by 2 rounded down. So in situations where you're dealing with something that is resistant to maybe non-magical weapons or something like that, this could be a really helpful button to have. But one thing to note is if we look at this crit one, that the half value is only minus 16 rather than the whatever 57 divided by 2 is, right? And that's because this half button is only looking at the normal damage, the 15 plus the 17, and dividing that by 2 and rounding it down. It's not looking at the total amount of damage and rounding that down. If you want a button like that, it is possible to add it. As a matter of fact, Oosh has a tutorial on that page that walks you through how to actually do that. So I won't take you through how that works because they've done a fantastic job of explaining that. What I'll do is show you how to set up a button so that if a target is vulnerable to a particular type of damage, it will automatically double that. So let's see how that works. Okay, so I've pulled up my trusty notepad window here, and let's walk through the code that we need to set up that vulnerable button. So we're going to start out here with exclamation point auto button. That's saying we're using a command from the auto button script. And the command that we're using is dash dash create but, meaning we are creating a button. This parameter right here gives us the name of the button, so I'm going to call it vulnerable. Content, we're going to come back to this one. Tooltip equals vulnerable percent. So this is what's going to appear when we hover over the button. And the percent is what's going to show the amount of damage that's being applied. So like when we hover over one of these buttons here, you see it says crit parentheses minus 57 HP. That's what the percent means. It's going to give us that minus 57 HP value. Then this section is what the button's going to look like. This is the CSS that's being used to define how the button will appear. So we're saying that the color is black. The font family is going to be Pictos Custom, and there's actually a list of all the Pictos stuff out here on this page. I will include a link to this in the description down below. And so here we're saying we're using Pictos Custom. Well, that's this table right here. And this ties back to that content value that we were showing earlier. So it's saying, okay, what character from Pictos Custom are we using? And in this example, we're using the T character. So that's this one right here. So the button's image will be the T character from Pictos Custom, which is in fact this little explosion, so the button will have a picture of the little explosion on it. The other stuff here, this is like how big the font will be. Now this part is probably the most intimidating part of the whole script, because you may not know CSS. I'll tell you folks a secret, I don't know CSS either. What I did was, I came into the actual scripts code, and I found this section called Constant Styles, and I copy and pasted from there, and just made some modifications based on whether I wanted to change colors or font size or something like that. So, whenever possible, cheat. And then lastly, we have the math. And the math is saying damage total 
So the amount of damage that was dealt times two. And the really important thing to notice in this is this minus sign right here. This is what tells auto button that this damage amount is going to be subtracted from the target's HP. If we didn't have that, if, if it was just this, then this would be additive, meaning we would be healing the target by that amount. But we want to make sure that we are reducing the target's hit points, and so for that we're going to make sure we have this minus sign. So now what I'm going to do is come back to my game, I'm going to copy this line of code, and I'm going to paste it into the chat window. And we get a message saying that there has been a new button called vulnerable that was successfully created. If we tried to run this right now, nothing would happen, because we need to enable the button. For that, we're going to use this command right here. This is auto button, show butt, vulnerable. So we're going to show the button that we just created, and we'll just paste that right in there. And now vulnerable has been added. So if we cast another guiding bolt, let's say we cast that at level one, submit. Now we have a new button over here on the right. This is our vulnerable button. And you can see it's minus 28 HP because it's taking the damage value here, the 14, and it's multiplying it by two to give us our damage that we're vulnerable. But in this example, we've rolled a crit. So what we can do is create another button that includes the crit damage in the vulnerable calculation. So the code for that is gonna look very similar to what we did earlier. Auto button, dash dash create butt. So we're making a button again. This time around, we're gonna call that button vulnerable crit. And the content, that is the image of the button, is going to be TT. But again, remember, we're using that Pictos custom family. So what that is, is going to be two of those little explosions side by side. And then the tooltip will be vulnerable crit with the percentage sign indicating the amount of damage that we're dealing. The style, I've got pretty much exactly the same. What's different is the math. So here, what we're seeing is the crit total plus the damage total multiplied by two. And again, making sure we have that little minus sign here to ensure that we are reducing the target's hit points by that amount. So let's go ahead, we're gonna run this now. All right, we get a new button successfully created. We're gonna show that button just like before. Okay, and now let's cast ourselves another guiding bolt. And let's, let's do a big one here. Let's upcast this at level five. Okay, so we've scored our damage here and we can see, all right, we have 22 damage plus 27 damage, 49? 49, yes. 49, yeah, that's 49 on the crit, but we're doubling that because we are vulnerable to it, so that's going to actually be 98 damage to our target. So if we would just hit that greater shadow with 98 damage, boom, it's dead. Now you may have noticed that over on that vulnerable button, we've got the second little explosion icon kind of going off the side of the button. So we can actually edit the style setting of that button to ensure that the little glyphs both stay on the button. And we're gonna do that with this command right here. So what we're saying is auto button, dash dash edit butt, so we're editing a button, the name of the button that we're editing, so the vulnerable crit, and then the property that we're editing. So I'm just resetting the style here. I actually wanna make this red. I'm keeping the same font family, and I'm reducing the font size down to 1.5. You might need to just tinker with this a little bit. Uh, I played with it a bit to, to figure out that 1.5 was gonna work. And then we'll just run that. Okay, we get a message saying the style's been updated. Let's fire off another guiding bolt. You know, this is the, the most number of guiding bolts I think my cleric has ever performed in a given session. And right here we see now that button is appearing correctly with the double glyphs. They're not getting cut off and the damage calculation is being performed successfully as well. Now, if you wanted to delete one of these buttons you had created, the command for that would look like this, auto button, dash dash delete button, and then the name of the button. I don't want to delete my buttons, so I'm not going to actually run this command. And the last thing I'll mention is that it is possible for you to reorder the buttons here as well. Each button has an index associated with it. So one, two, three, four, five, six. If you want to reorder them, maybe I want to put the vulnerable buttons before the heal button. Then what I would do is run a command that looks like this where we say auto button order, so we're reordering the buttons, and then the position you want each button to appear in. So right now, this is button six. So what I'm saying is I'm gonna keep one, two, and three in the same place, and then I'm moving five and six and putting four at the end. So if we run this, 
we're going to move the heal button, which is currently number four, all the way down to the end. And now, we guiding bolt yet again, the heal button has been moved. The important thing to know about this is now the heal button is number six. So if you want to reorder again, you just one, two, three, four, five, six, and do the same thing where you put the number of the button in the spot that you want to move it to. So if I want to put the heal button back, I would change my order to be one, two, three, six, four, five. And now if we actually run that again, another guiding bolt, we can see the buttons are back in their original order. So there you have it. That's how you can use the auto button script to quickly deduct hit points from a target and how to build your own buttons to customize things even further. Thank you again to Oosh for building this script. It really is fantastic and I really enjoy using it. So I hope you all found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a like and consider subscribing. And until next time, folks, have a great day.